Hello and welcome to the Mini School of Life channel. Mini School of Life, creative writing for the children, educational advice for the adults. So if you're here on this channel, you want to talk about what's going on in school, things around school, sometimes things outside of it, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll see more content like this. And today, you can see it right in the, in the title of the video. Uh, this might be my most controversial topic personally, maybe not in reality, but I have to say that I've covered and explored a lot of topics on this channel, and this one, I feel like I have a very hot take for some reason, and one that I was grappling with sharing for a while. Now, uh, I'm going to share my thoughts on why I believe that teacher pay is not the biggest issue facing teachers. Now, let me make it very clear from the get-go. Um, I am not saying that teachers asking for more money and higher salaries is a bad thing. What I'm saying is that there was more immediate and more important things that teachers should be asking for that will make the teachers that are already working stay where they're at and be happier and also prospective teachers more eager to join the field. So for this topic, uh, I think it's fair for me to be very transparent about my background. Since we're talking about money and expenses, some people might view the things I'm saying in this uh, little this little video and immediately discredit what I'm saying because, well, you're talking about uh, money and the need to make money for teachers, Nico. How could you? You shouldn't be making the argument when you don't have as much things to that need money. So look, I'll own it. I don't have any kids or any dependents. I managed to live comfortably financially here in California and don't think that I somehow got a large sum of money or some, some sort of boon in wealth because look, I left teaching in June of the last school year. I had planned that I was just gonna go six months with no job, no nothing, uh, because I didn't want anything to do with public school or just schools as an institution. I wanted to just live for six months, think for six months, and write for six months. And so throughout that whole school year, all I did was save money from my teaching paychecks. And hey, I, I have this new insight. Basically, that that six months was an investment in me to find some new... Uh, self-discovery which would also turn and lead to professional discovery um, so I'll say it right away do not let um, my background uh, in terms of you know what I have what I my expenses are as a reason to not listen to the arguments that I'm laying out for why teacher pay is not the biggest issue facing teachers um, my decision and you can look at the seven reasons why I left teaching. You notice how money was not one of those reasons why I left teaching? There's a reason for that. I left teaching not because of the money. I left because it was very clear that, that public schools were obsessed with efficiency and improving efficiency to an unhealthy degree. Again, you can go and look at the seven reasons video if you want to know why I quit. Those reasons still stand, but that's not why I'm here. I'm about the money today. And you mean to tell me that, let's say I make, I get paid $200,000. And let's be honest, $2,000, uh, I live here in the Bay Area of California, a little suburb out. Um, $200,000 is just enough money for me to buy a sandwich and that's you know that's that's a lot of money but you mean two hundred thousand dollars I'm gonna have the same exact job that I had last year you mean I'm like for two hundred thousand dollars I'm gonna be subjected to the same the same patronizing personalities the same pointless professional developments the same constant state of always feeling left or feeling behind no matter how much work I do in and outside of the job no no I am staying far away from that job no matter what the salary is 
sometimes I think about what would bring me back to teaching. Uh, and, you know, I tell people, look, I would take a classroom job, classroom teaching job at a public school, any co formal school setting. I would take back that job if it had these kind of things in the job. One, uh, I show up by my contracted hours and I'm free to go as soon as those uh, those hours end at three o'clock I can go home no meetings no professional developments no uh, any any conversations with the district all of that should be optional and it shouldn't be shamed if a teacher wants to leave to go straight home or go to something else right after school and I know what you're thinking uh, well that teacher obviously doesn't care about uh, the, the the kids and uh, the school they work for that is that's completely that's completely false I mean you have teachers that do oblige to their hours come in early and stay for every professional development meeting and guess what they're not doing much for the fam or for the families and the kids they serve as it is so I argue that by freeing up a teacher's schedule one, you give that teacher more peace of mind. You allow them to foster and cultivate their creativity, their imagination, the things that a teacher needs in order to create the next lesson or something exciting to come up with that, that, that idea of inspiration to share with the kids the next day. Having, having a free reign to just go home doesn't mean you're going to go home every single day. Uh, I went to the minimum amount of professional developments and the minimum amount of, of uh, school or school meetings that did not stop me from being proactive and scheduling times just to talk and have a conversation about life and philosophies uh, as it relates to teaching with my principal, with colleagues. Um, it, it, the, the making these things mandatory these professional de developments and these these meetings uh, and making them mandatory and so formulaic there's a lot of times where a teacher will be sitting on something they're supposed to go to and their thinking is immediately I could be working on XYZ and in, a, in an actual teacher's case it's not XYZ it's ABC all the whole alphabet because that's the work they're inundated with and that time to work on the insurmountable task which needs to be managed uh, that time is compromised by the district so there's number one what would help me return even for less money is contracted hours and more openness to my schedule um, I'd also uh, like it if teachers uh, across the board not just me I had a very fortunate uh, I had a very fortunate relationship with my last principal in that she granted me full full autonomy in how I taught the standards uh, for for my class and it's I get it there's a there's people right now looking and they're like yo you can't let teachers teach whatever they want fine <laughs> that's I'm cool with that they can't teach whatever they want they can stick to some agreed upon standards and yes you can have a discussion on you know what are standards what are our standards is this a really valuable thing to have for I don't know kids K through second do they really need to know a specific mission and objective goal for their day when they should just be playing and learning social skills that's another issue but I would like it if look you give me the standards and I can teach it how I want to teach it. I don't have to follow Benchmark. I don't have to follow Lucy Calkins. I don't need to follow Math Bridges. My passion for these academic subjects, and more importantly, my passion for childcare and working with the kids, naturally should allow me to formula, form my lessons and my class time in a way that's so personal to the kids that are directly in front of me. It's not gonna feel like I'm reading a script made by someone in an ivory tower 3,000 miles away and just regurgitating it back to them. Technically, yes, you can do that. You can have kids uh, learn. <laughs> I'm not even gonna put it. You can have kids learn these academic subjects uh, using the scripts that are given to teachers and that's fine that that material is out there as some sort of 
you know, uh, way to teach a teacher how to teach it. They truly have no lesson. I'm not going to sit here and act like I created everything from scratch, but there are some schools that are like, you got to follow this because we need test scores. No teacher, no real teacher who loves working with kids is going to be satisfied with just being an orator who reads pre-made scripts to kids. And if you are, do you are you really that person that deserves that pay raise? Really? You deserve that $200,000 a year acting like that and conducting your classroom like that? I don't think so. And the last thing that would make me return to schools and this isn't this isn't even happen to me too much. Um, but I know that it's happened to a lot of teachers out there. I think it should be some way where it is it is understood between the parent, the administration, and the teacher that we adhere to strict strict discipline rules and student accountability. Um, if there is any situation where a parent is acting foul, a child is acting foul, uh, just ha granting the teacher the peace of mind that their administrators and whoever their support staff is are they are they are going to really treat the situation fairly as they can of course there's going to be a bias to create uh, to protecting the teacher uh and protecting your own kin uh but a lot of schools and a lot of administrators in the districts will immediately it's almost like they they took on the the customer is always right philosophy and that worked in the 70s but i've learned uh, a better quote and a more accurate quote that i think schools should operate with that would improve the lives of, of teachers and the families they serve it's not the customer is always right it's the the customer is a person and a person is not always right uh, when you treat when you treat your clientele as capable of great successes and failures, it's a much more honest relationship. There will be arguments, there will be points of conflict, but that is a much better alternative than cultivating a clientele of entitlement because you're always acquiescing to what the parents want, what the kids want, because you're so afraid to somehow put the school or the teacher the school in jeopardy you don't care about the teachers not all schools maybe your principal's awesome but you don't care about the teachers uh to these terrible schools because they're expendable you can't deal with any negative reaction coming from the outside uh because of your your decision to actually adhere to some principle uh, some higher standard for all these children acquiesce kick that can down the road, uh, we'll take care of it. And in the end, the entitled parents become more entitled, the kid gets what they want in the moment, and they're pretty much having no coping skills of actually meeting a wall that says, no, that kind of behavior is not allowed. A lot of teachers will stay if they knew that their schools operates, uh, operated with this kind of framework of the customer as a person. The families are people. They are not always right. So to wrap this up, instead of arguing for more money, teachers should argue for a more realistic job structure. You can see the video where I talk about the unrealistic expectations of teachers. You shouldn't. Teachers should not allow themselves to take that job for more money. That's if if you had two hundred fifty thousand dollars to do that same exact job, even if you're the opposite of me and you have kids, um, really is that worth the 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 diminished return on your mental sanity, the the time taken away from your family because you're so busy. Uh, trying to accomplish the insurmountable tasks that are laid before you until the summer, which everyone thinks that the summer is the time to recover, but it's it's the summer mindset in in the first month is it is beauty. It's finally a release of all the crazy crap that you were dealing with. But once July hits, it's almost like seeing a storm in the horizon and knowing that a 
tsunami of task is going to come your way the second that week of prep and the first day of school comes. It, it isn't it isn't my ties on the beach for a whole three months. That's not a summer. The job of a teacher is not, as it is right now, the job of a teacher is not worth a higher price tag. It's just not. And, and I think that a lot of the people, because I'm running into more people outside of education now with the work I do, um, they will always say, um, man, I think teachers should get paid more. That's the first thing they usually say to me. And that's the reason I'm making this video is just that, that getting paid more will not solve anything. Um, and I think the, I, I take it all in good faith from the district, from out, out the society outside of a school, the community outside of a school, when they keep saying, we need to support teachers, we need to support teachers. And the best way I can describe it is that while you're a teacher, uh, you do want to be supported. Um, but the way it's given to you, it's like being incredibly thirsty and you need some water. Um, instead, of, instead of being pointed to, to where there is cups and water and you can drink yourself, uh, districts and society and everyone who wants to support teachers they have the cup of water and they they just feed you <laughs> they feed it to you and you can't do anything they're just like no 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 you need water drink 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 everything is too controlled and it's just it yes you get support of tons of amazon gift cards and target gift cards and a whole bunch of free stuff um you get the support of you know having people uh, arrange meetings for you to talk about your teaching experience uh, but it's it's all it's it's all done in a very micromanaging way and it's all almost yeah it's just suff like it's not it's not it's terrible in how suffocating it is I think if you really want to support teachers you can support teachers by leaving them alone and trusting them with the work they're trying to do that's really hard i know there's a lot of tiktok videos and twitter videos of shit, terrible teachers <laughs> and i i had seen videos that make me wince too um you don't the road to better teachers overall is not made by just having cameras in every room there has to be an amount of trust and and I'm just saying that the job has to be structured in a way that an individual teacher can succeed and fail on their own marriage. Give them a, on their own merits. Give them enough rope to hang themselves, basically. Because that was my approach. I didn't care about tenure when I was teaching. I was just like, I want this school year to be the most inspirational, the most challenging, and the most fun year for these kids. If I don't return, if I do return, that's great, but I'm here. I don't care about the, the job security. I, I care about the immediacy uh, of, of the immediacy and the urgency to get these kids to experience the school year that I just described. That's it. Um, and I know not all teachers act like that, but I just don't believe that giving more money will somehow create better teachers and better schools uh it 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 doesn't seem to actually address the issues that would improve education for children and the families um so i hope you enjoyed that video please welcome to the again to the mini school of life if you like this video again subscribe to the channel it really helps out i'm still reading the comments and i really appreciate all of the conversations that uh have been coming from this channel i'm continuing to still teach and i'll keep coming back to you with more findings and more musings as they come take care